Awesome. Thanks, Nate. Um, so, hey, guys, my name is Jesse Jennings, and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. Um, and welcome. We are so excited to have you. Um, if it's the first time and you're first in one of our Plaid classes, welcome. We are the makers of Folk Art Paint, Mod Podge, and tons of other products that I'm sure you guys use. Um, and like Nate said, today we'll be showing you this really awesome backpack. So, using one of my very favorite products, which is Mod Podge Fabric. So, I'm going to tell you guys all about it, all the different ways you can use it, and how to use it. Um, so we'll definitely get into that, but I do want to let you know that if you have any questions, like Nate said, or comments about the product, please put them in the chat. Um, Steven is also here and he's on our plaid team as well. So he will answer the questions for you or he'll relay them to me live and I'd be happy to answer them myself. So um, it's a super detailed backpack. I'm going to show you all the different ways um, and all the different techniques you've used to make this backpack. So be able to recreate something similar at home um, or something kind of close to it using fabrics that you like. Um, so we can go ahead and get started and I'm going to let you guys know what supplies I have here in front of me. Um, so of course I have my backpack so just a plain white backpack canvas, um, you know, really any fabric backpack will work I always like whenever I'm crafting I try to use like more natural fibers like cotton or something like that but um, anything is fine. Um, I also have my fabrics here that I bought at Michaels so Michaels has a great variety of fabrics so these are just kind of those fat quarters so they're great for projects like this you need a little bit. Um, of each fabric. You don't need a ton of one. So I always like to keep these. I like to keep my scraps just for when I'm doing something like this. Um, this is actually a great project to make. If you have any fabric scraps at home or if you're a quilter or something like that, I'm sure you have tons of extra little pieces you've saved. This is a really great project for some for stuff like that. Um, of course, like I said in the beginning, I have my Mod Podge fabric. So this is a really amazing and versatile uh, product. So um, just like the title, it says you can use it with fabric, which is great. So it's nice and flexible, it stays soft, but my favorite part about it is that it is um, washing machine safe. So when you're done crafting your backpack, after you've let it cure, you can toss it in the washing machine, which is awesome, especially if you're crafting for your children. I also have a couple paints here in case you decide you wanna add some paint details. So this is our Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint and the colors I have are licorice and marigold. So just a black and a really pretty like golden yellow color. Um, and the reason we're using multi-surface is because it's more durable um, for fabric. All right, I've got some little scissors here. So just like in the um, event listing, in the um, supply list, you want to have some nice little detail scissors. If you're trying to use some larger scissors, um, you know, fabric scissors, of course, are great. But I like these tiny little snippy scissors, I call them, for when I'm cutting little tiny details, like these little pieces of fabric we'll be doing today. But really, any, any scissors you have at home is fine. Um, I've got some paint brushes here, and these are for applying my Mod Podge and applying my paint. And then, of course, I've got some water and paper towels and a plate to put them on. Um, I also have a couple of sort of like extra items that I like to just have on hand when I'm Mod Podging. So I have some wax paper here. Um, so I always have wax paper when I'm Mod Podging. It's just great because Mod Podge doesn't stick to wax paper. So you can use it for, you know, uh, pressing down pieces of fabric or paper, depending on your project. You can use it for laying uh, papers or fabrics on and brushing Mod Podge onto them. It's just a really great thing to have so you don't get Mod Podge on your surface and you don't get you know your fabric stuck to things you don't want it to get stuck to um, and then last but not least i do have some uh tissue paper here and the only thing we're using our tissue paper here for is to stuff our backpack to make it easier to craft on so this wasn't on the supply list but anything you have at home is fine you've got newspapers you know uh, plastic bags even if you just have like a towel you want to stick in there and then just take it out later this is just like i said so it's not so flimsy it makes it a little bit you know more sturdy so that we'll be able to craft on it a little bit more easily um so i think that's all the supplies i have in front of me any questions about the supplies so far yes we have a couple people asking uh what materials your backpack can be and okay. we also have a couple people asking where you got uh that particular backpack um great question so i believe they ordered this one online but michaels has a ton of really awesome um like fashion and you know clothing and apparel type uh products so They've got great tote bags and aprons um, and they always have like cute like extra bags too outside of the tote bags they are kind of like seasonal. Um, but you can do they have caps and you know baseball caps and shoes and anything you could want, I believe we just ordered this one online though this is just like a craft like a plain white like craft backpack. Um, so yeah, I also have another example here, this is just a similar technique, but a different design, obviously just another like you know little tote we got at the store a little plain canvas tote you can do you know different designs but same technique on. Um, as far as material, like I said, I'll, I whenever I'm crafting, whether it's painting on fabric or mod podging on fabric, I just think it's always best to use uh, natural fibers just because it takes the product better. 
but um, that doesn't have to be the case. If you're using something that's like polyester or some sort of synthetic fibers, it should work just as well. So hopefully awesome. that answers your question. And um, if you don't have Mod Podge fabric, could you use regular matte um, Mod Podge? Um, that's a great question. So if you don't have Mod Podge fabric, the only thing is that our uh, the matte Mod Podge, the original Mod Podge formula is not intended to be washed with water. So you wouldn't really be, if it's something that's like something you wouldn't really be washing much, like say, I'm trying to think of an example. You know, if it was like a bag, you're not gonna wear very often or something like that. You weren't gonna be, you know, it wasn't gonna be a lot of wear and tear. I think you could probably get away with using one of the original formulas. Um, but like I said, the Mod Podge fabric was designed just for doing this. So it's gonna be super sturdy. It's gonna be super soft and you can throw it in the washing machine or wash by hand, depending on what you like to do with your laundry. Awesome, thanks, Jesse. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so we're gonna get started. Like I said, I've got just some random tissue paper here that I had with my gift wrap stuff. And I'm gonna start by stuffing that. I'm gonna craft on this pocket. And so of course I already have some in here actually. Otherwise it would be flimsy and wrinkled. It'd be hard to craft on. So um, if you're you know crafting on you know the, this part, you might wanna stuff the inside with like I said, towels or like old you know, you know, clothes you had laying around or something. Um, but I'm just gonna use this tissue paper I have. Let me go ahead and I'm just gonna stick some of this in there. Like I said, newspapers, like I know I always have a stash of like plastic grocery bags in my house for things like this. So anything like that would be great. Okay. And of course you wanna to remember to take it out before you go to wash it. Jesse, if your tissue paper has color to it, like you're using red, um, would you need to worry about it bleeding at all? That, no, you, you wouldn't while it's dry. That's why I said, make sure, make sure, make sure you take it out before you wash it. Um, or if you're using some sort of other glue that's not Mod Podge fabric, that's maybe um, like more liquid and might seep through the bag. You don't wanna you, make sure not to use any sort of color tissue paper because it may bleed. Like color tissue paper always wants to bleed. There's a, really, a lot of really cool techniques you can use or do with the dye of tissue paper and, and kind of use it to your advantage. But if you get this wet, it's definitely gonna bleed on whatever you do. So you wanna make sure to take all this out before you wash it or you know have it in the rain or anything like that. You don't wanna forget. So maybe white is probably safer. I just had this on hand. Okay, so I've got it nice and stuffed now. So that's probably firm enough for me to go ahead and start crafting on. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna set my bag aside too. Um, so I want to start by showing you guys a really cool technique using Mod Podge fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a piece of wax paper to work on here. Um, like I said, you can use wax paper. Um, parchment paper works pretty well. Silicone mats are excellent for Mod Podging. Just something so that our fabric that we're about to uh, put our adhesive on is not going to stick to our paper. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut a piece of fabric. So this is a really cute pattern with lots of zigzags. It's really fun for kids um, or just for summer in general. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut a piece of that out just to make it a little bit more manageable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sort of stiffen my fabric. It really won't get very stiff, but I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to grab some of my Mod Podge, my Mod Podge fabric. And I'm just going to get a flat brush here, just a plain flat brush. Any, any kind will do. Anything you use for your acrylic paints is fine for this. And I'm going to brush the fabric Mod Podge onto the back of my fabric. So notice I'm not doing it on the front. I have it face down and I'm brushing Mod Podge fabric onto the back of my fabric. And what that's going to do is it's going to stay nice and soft. It's not going to make it too, um, too stiff because we don't want it to be stiff when we put it onto our backpack. But what it is going to do is it's going to keep it from fraying. So we'll let this dry. I'm kind of going to have to do a little bit of um, skipping around here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let this dry on the back of my fabric. I'll just let it dry for you know a couple of hours until it's dried to the touch, and it'll keep it from fraying. So when you go and try to cut all these little tiny detailed shapes um, and patterns from your fabric later, you don't have to worry about the cotton fabrics fraying around the edges when you have such tiny pieces. That can definitely be a problem for projects like that. So this will make it so that does not happen, and it's much easier to manage later on when we're cutting all those tiny details. So I like to do like kind of larger pieces and then, you know, so I have lots to work with later on. I don't want to do a tiny piece and then be like, oh, I wish I had, you know, put fabric Mod Podge on more of that so I could use it more for my project. So I like to do a big piece 
Um, and then of course I'll save it. If I have any extras, once it's dry, I'll save it for a different project later on. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna continue applying this all over. Should keep painting it on. You just, like I said, you just wanna put it all over the back of your fabric. And you can see I'm dipping my brush. Uh, Mod Podge fabric is a little bit thicker than our original formula of Mod Podge. So if you're having trouble kind of getting it to glide smoothly across your fabric, um, you can just dip your brush in the tiniest bit of water. You don't wanna dilute the Mod Podge at all, but just enough to kind of thin it out so it just flows really nicely across the fabric that you're painting. Okay, so it's mostly covered. So you'd wanna cover the whole thing Nice, even coat. You don't need a ton. You just want to be nice and even. Uh, and of course, just like all of our Mod Podge formulas, it goes on milky white, but it will always dry clear. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse my brush off in the water. You don't want to ever let Mod Podge dry in your brush. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for now. And so what you would do is you want to let this dry for just a couple of hours. You can stick it in front of a fan. That will definitely help the drying process. But just because you only have an hour here and I want to show you all the different components of this bag, I have some that I've already stiffened. I stiffened them yesterday to get ready for this class. So this is the same fabric that I just showed you. But like I said, it's not super stiff because it still stays pretty soft to, to go on your bag. So it's not you know uncomfortable if you were to put it on a shirt or something. Um, but you can see that you can kind of hear it. You can see that Mod Podge in the back, maybe not on uh, camera, but when I go to cut this, I'm, it's not gonna fry at all. So it's gonna be nice um, and intact and I'm making these tiny little designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my backpack back over here. Okay, so you can see in the original photo guys that you saw in the event listing, we did a really cute pattern. It says, be kind. This is an um, excellent project and an excellent message for back to school. So if you have kids going um, back to school, you can make this for them, but of course you can just make it for yourself. Um, so throw your stuff in, like I said, a tote bag to carry things around or to carry your craft supplies in. Um, but it's a really great way to personalize things. So you can put a really fun message on here, or you can um, put your child's name, which I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a name today to show you how easy it is to personalize. Um, but we're going to start by cutting out some of our fabrics. Okay, so like I said, this is, I'm using all my stiff, I keep saying stiff, and it's really not that stiff, but I'm using all of my Mod Podge fabrics, um, all the ones I kind of sealed the fibers yesterday with, I'm using those to craft this bag. So I'm gonna start by cutting, I really like these stripes. So I'm gonna cut out one of these stripes so I can put it around the edge of my zipper part here. This is where it's kind of fun to start designing, depending on what kind of um, a piece you're using, whether you're doing a hat or a bag or whatever it is that you have at home. Um, this is the fun part to kind of start picking and choosing um, and designing the placement of all of your fabric pieces. So I'm just gonna cut out one of these stripes. How's everybody doing? Any questions, Stephen? No, no questions. I think we're good. Everybody awesome. is enjoying watching. Cool. Okay. We keep cutting this out. Uh, and that's like I said, this, that's what's so great about this is that there's so there's such a variety of things you can do using this. I mean, it's just up to your imagination, really. Whatever kind of fabrics you can find at Michael's, um, you know, you can make so many beautiful patterns and designs with this technique. So again, I'm just cutting out a strip here that I'm gonna go ahead and Mod Podge to my backpack. You can see it's not fraying, which is really nice. That's because we added the Mod Podge to it yesterday. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of some of my scraps. I'm gonna kind of measure it. I'm gonna lay it on my backpack and see how long I need it to be. I'll mark it with my finger and I'll trim it so it's just the right length. And then I'm gonna grab my brush that I had the same one I used before. I'll make sure it's a little dry now. I don't want any excess water in it. And I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to my backpack. So I'm just going to apply some Mod Podge right onto my surface here. And you really could do it 
either way. You can apply it to your surface and then apply the fabric down or apply it to your fabric and then apply your fabric down like an applique. Um, it's kind of up to you. I'm just gonna go ahead, since this is a large piece and I'm going to apply it right onto my surface. And then you just have a nice, it's hard, I know it's hard for you guys to see because it's a white backpack, but you just want a nice even coat. You don't need a ton of Mod Podge to make it stick. Just a nice smooth, even coat so it has good contact when we go to put our fabric down on top of it so it adheres nicely and evenly. So I'm just brushing Mod Podge all onto the edge of this little pocket here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my fabric, I think maybe I'll do it this way, and I'm going to apply it right down on my backpack where I want it to go. And then you just wanna press down I'm gonna make sure you have really good contact um, with the two fabrics. You wanna make sure it's nice and smooth and all of the fabric is touching where you want it to stay because you want it to really adhere um, to the piece that you're crafting on. You don't want any edges coming up. And that's why I kind of, uh, we stuffed our backpack. If you're, back, if you're crafting a backpack like me, you gotta make sure you stuff it so it's nice and firm for you to press down on and make sure everything is adhered really well. But this is the best part is that it's so easy to do. It's so easy to apply. Um, and when you go to wash it later, it's so easy to clean too. And when you don't have to sew, I love no sew projects. I love fabric projects, um, but I'm not very patient when it comes to sewing. So we can do so many great no sew projects with um, fabric Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm gonna keep grabbing some, I'm gonna see what I've got here. I've got lots of little pieces that I saved from when I was making this original backpack that I've are already um, sealed with Mod Podge. You can kind of hear it. It's a little bit stiffer than it would normally be, but not so stiff that it won't be soft on our backpack. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some of these, kind of see what I've got here. I know you guys might have different fabrics at home. So it's a good time to kind of lay out what you have and see what kind of designs you wanna do. We've got cute ladybugs and flowers and birds. So, Jesse, um, Cecilia wanted to know, would this work on pleather or leather? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't think it would work great on pleather or leather. And the reason is because I think that uh, Mod Podge fabric works really well on things with like fibers, if that makes sense. Like that's what um, that's what it's kind of designed for is like uh, cottons and things like that, some sort of like a knit fabric. So I don't think it'd be great on pleather or leather. Not to say that it wouldn't work at all, but I, I guess I mean like the uh, washing machine part, which of course you're not gonna throw your uh, leather in the washing machine anyway. Um, but you might want to use one of our original formulas if you're doing something like that. Okay. Does that make and sense? Could, could you show one of the pieces um, that you've already um, had dry up close? Because I ha oh, we yeah. have people asking about how stiff um, fabric makes it. Yeah, so it's not, it's a little bit stiffer. Let me find a piece that's uh, not, I didn't put Mod Podge on. So of course you have a nice cotton fabric and you can see this one, you can kind of hear it's slightly stiffer than the original fabric but not so stiff that like if you were to put it on like a t-shirt or a baseball cap or a backpack, of course, that it would be uncomfortable. It's still pretty soft. And then when you go to wash it, it gets even softer after it's cured and after you're finished with your project, um, it'll soften even more. So you can see not super stiff, just we put that fabric or that Mod Podge on there just so it'd be stiff enough so it's a little bit easier to work with. And it dries clear, correct? Yeah, of course, it dries totally clear. So you can see here, I mean, this is just the back of the fabric, but it doesn't look any different than and I just stick that piece than how the back of the fabric looked before, you know? Awesome. It's gonna always dry clear. Okay, so I'm gonna start by cutting out little strips. So I'm gonna do a little name, like I said, I'm gonna do the name Amy. So um, I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna start cutting out uh, some little strips of my fabric, kind of like we did here in the original one where it says, be kind. I'm gonna do something similar to that. So again, there's just so many like different ways you can personalize this, which I love crafts that can be personalized. It's a great gift too, or like for a baby shower or something, it'd be great to make a diaper bag with the name on it. There's just tons of tons and tons of ideas you can do with this. There's a couple of good questions here. Um, okay. Andrea asked, does it work on tag board? Does it work on what? Tag board. I don't know what that is. 
I also don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us what that is and hopefully I'll be able to answer. I don't think yeah. I know what that is though. And then somebody, um, somebody asked, does the Mod Podge have to dry before you uh, put it on the backpack? Um, yes. So if you're doing, if you're, you know, adding the Mod Podge to the back, let, let me say this too. The adding the Mod Podge to the back, it is not mandatory for something like this. It is just a little like pro tip that keeps it. So you can see here, if I were to have cut this before I added the Mod Podge, it might be fraying. I'd be having to pull off extra pieces and I'd be having to trim it. It'd be fraying everywhere because it's cotton fabric. But since I added that Mod Podge, it has nice clean edges and it's not fraying at all. Um, but that is not a necessary part of this project. You could just take your plain old cotton fabrics you got at Michael's and just start cutting them and adding them to the backpack. Absolutely. Um, but yes, if you're doing it this way, you do want to let it dry before you start cutting it out because, of course, it'll be kind of a mess. Okay. So we have a couple of people saying that tag board is like a durable or like a thick card stock. Oh, okay. And they say um, it's like cardboard, but a bit thinner. Okay. So remind me of the question. So can you uh, use this to apply that to fabric? I guess. Yes. Um, I, or I think it's, can you apply fabric to um, tag board? Oh yeah, absolutely. If you're doing like some sort of like paper crafting um, or something like that, or um, yeah, let me, I'm kind of curious. Let me know what project you're thinking of in the comments. Uh, but yeah, you could totally add fabric to other materials as well. Just keeping in mind that like, if you want to take advantage of the whole like washing machine safe thing, uh, it needs to be another kind of material that is also washing machine safe, if that makes sense. Okay. I hope that answered your question, Andrea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let us know. Yeah. We want to definitely help you out there. But like, yeah, if you, if you were doing like, if you're a paper crafter and you like to make cards or if you do scrapbooking and stuff, um, you can totally add fabric to that kind of thing. And you can use Fabric Mod Podge for that. If you want to do something similar to the technique we're doing here, but you know, on a scrapbook page, absolutely you can do that. It's a really fun, you know, little additive you can do. And it also adds a little bit of dimension too, which is fun. But yeah, for sure. I'm just going to keep cutting these out. Okay, so I always like to save my scraps, like I said. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start building the little name here. Like I said, I'm going to do the name Amy. So this will be for someone named Amy who's going back to school. So I've got all my little strips here that I'm going to make my letters out of. I just love all of the fabrics that they offer at Michael's. They have such cute stuff. All right, so I'm gonna start kind of trimming them down. You can kind of lay them out too. You can start by sort of seeing what um, sizes and shapes of strips you'll need for the word that you're making. Maybe I'll cut this one in half. This one's a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna cut him in half. You can see here, if we were gonna be cutting these really thin little strips of fabric um, without having added the Mod Podge fabric to them uh, in advance, they would just be fraying everywhere. It would be really hard to manage. Jesse, if you were doing this on a t-shirt, um, do we know how many washings it could survive? Oh gosh, it can serve. I've never, I have lots of uh, clothing that I've added Mod Podge fabric to, and I, I can't really give you an exact answer for that, but I've never had one wear out. So that's great to know. I know I'm looking on the bottle to see if they have an exact answer for that, but I, you know, I don't think we've, we've really found like an exact limit. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty durable. Once you get it on there, like it's not coming off. It's like you sewed it. It's really, here, I can kind of show you, give you an idea. So here's, we at, at, did this, you know, a few weeks ago. It is on there. Like that is not coming off. I can't even get the edge up. Like it is, it is very much adhered to this backpack. Okay, so I've got my little A shape here. And I'm going to do my M. And I'll use the tails for that one. And then I've got my Y too. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start trimming those. All right, so I've got my A started. And like I said, you just kind of kind of lay it out before you start gluing. Um, it's kind of like a, like a measure twice, cut once sort of situation. You just want to lay it out and make sure you have it all placed how you like it before you start um, gluing things down. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm gonna try to make them as even as I can, nice even lettering. I'm gonna start working on my M here. And of course, you can add, you can see here on the original one, there's like little flowers. So I can show you how to do that as well once I get my letters down. Okay. All right, so I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start adhering my little letters that we've just cut out down. So this time, since I'm using kind of tiny pieces, I don't want to get like so much Mod Podge in my backpack and then have like excess Mod Podge where my fabric isn't sticking. Um, so I'm gonna grab some wax paper and I'm just gonna apply the um, fabric Mod Podge right onto my fabric and then stick it to my backpack. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna grab a slightly smaller brush. So just another small flat brush. Um, and I'm gonna start with my little A pieces here. And I'm just going to apply a small amount of fabric Mod Podge to the back of these little pieces of fabric. So like I said, it doesn't take a lot. Just a nice, smooth, thin coat. You just wanna make sure you get the whole back covered. That's the important part. You don't need a thick, thick, thick coat on there. You just need enough so that it's all, the whole piece is covered. So just go ahead and lay that down. And like I said, you just wanna really make sure that you have really good contact there. You want the whole thing to be stuck down so it can cure, those two pieces of fabric can kind of cure together. So I'm gonna apply some to my second piece here. So let us know guys, if you're inspired by this technique, if you are excited to try some Mod Podge fabric, let us know what kind of um, projects you have in mind. If you have something that you're planning on making and this is the perfect technique, let us know what you guys are crafting at home. I would love to hear it. Just gonna make sure it's nice. And you can see here, I guess I didn't have enough on the bottom. So I wanna make sure I add some more there and get that stuck down really well. I don't want any pieces sticking up. How's it going in the chat, Steven? Looking good. Somebody um, asked, could the name have been removed with transfer um, masking or painter's tape? Um, will it be messed up? Like, I guess is what they're asking. Um, say it again. What's the question again? It says, could the name have been removed with transfer masking or painter's tape so it won't be messed up? The name have been removed. Oh, like, oh, just like you, like you would do like a vinyl decal? I, yeah, I think that yeah, that's, a, that's actually yeah. a great question. Um, I don't think it's a really good idea, actually. I don't think it would work, though, because um, when the Mod Podge uh, fabric is wet, it's not like super duper tacky, like you're thinking like maybe like a vinyl would be. Um, so I think that the fabric would end up sticking to your transfer paper better than it would stick to uh, like right off the bat better than it would stick to the bag because it is a glue, you know, so it's not it's not like tape or something it takes a while for it to really adhere. It's not, it's not super sticky right off the bat, if that makes sense. But that is actually a really good idea. You guys had good questions today. So I'm just going ahead and I'm continuing. I'm doing my M here for my Amy bag, making sure everything is stuck down really nicely. You can see I'm kind of moving around my, um, my wax paper here too, so I don't get Mod Podge on the front of any of my pieces of fabric. I'm kind of moving to clean areas as I go. And it's okay to get on your hands. Um, Mod Podge is water-based and non-toxic. So if you get it on your hands, um, you can just you know wash your hands with soap and water when you're done. It's perfectly safe. So it's definitely all over my fingers, but that's okay. Here's a good question. Would this be safe to use to decorate uh, a face mask? Uh, the outside of a face mask? We have done that actually, yeah. Just make sure it's nice and cured. Um, and I maybe would wash it first too, but yeah, we've done the outside for sure. I don't think, know if I'd put it on the inside just because, um, but yeah, you can put like an applique or something on the outside of a face mask. That'd be really cute. Or like a letter or something on the side. That'd be really cute. So I got my last letter here. Make 
sure it's nice and lined up. And again, just make sure you get that fabric down really well. That's what's going to help it to really adhere together and be super duper permanent. Okay, so my last little piece here. And like I said, guys, I'm gonna show you how to do all of these different um, components of this bag, but I won't do the entire thing just because that would take a while. But I wanna make sure you guys learn all of the different pieces of the bag so you guys can use all these techniques later on for your own project. So, all right, so you can see how easy that was to do. Um, super duper easy. And like I said, you just wanna read the bottle, let it cure. Um, according to the instructions on the bottle, and then you can throw it in the washing machine and it's good to go. It's great for Amy to take to school. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you another, a couple other details here that I'll show you how to do. Um, so this one here, so we did a little strip here. We did our, our uh, letters here. And what this is behind it is A, you can do lots of layering with your fabric, which is so fun. So you can put a big piece of yellow fabric um, and then do your letters on top. But this is actually our multi-surface paint. So we just taped off a square here. Um, and we painted inside of it and then we added our letters and then just painted little stitches around it to look like fabric, which is really fun. Again, you get that really cute quilted look, but it's all no sew. You don't have to do any sewing at all. So that's really, really a lot of fun. Um, so this one here, if you guys can see, I don't know, um, this is a little 3D element um, on the backpack here. So these flowers are three dimensional, um, which is a great technique that I can show you now. So I'll find the fabric uh, or the flower fabric that we used for that. And while you're doing that, Jesse, I have a couple questions for you. Okay, cool. So um, somebody wanted to know if you could use, um, let me find it, uh, napkins instead of fabric. You know, there's a kind of a, it's kind of, we're not sure. <laughs> We've done it before and it works. So some people swear by it. Some people love putting napkins on fabric and they say you can still run it through the, the washing machine and it works great. Um, and I've done it where it does work, but I've also done it where it doesn't work. So it's kind of risky to be honest with you. But I know some people who love to use Mod Patch fabric on napkins on clothes like this and they swear by it. They say it works every time. So I'm, I don't want to tell you a real answer because I'm afraid that your project will get messed up and I don't want you to blame me. Uh, but some people, like I said, some people do it and they say that it works perfectly. So okay. I don't know and if then, that helps at all, but. <laughs> <laughs> another question is, uh, does it have to be a specific fabric or can it just be like any kind of fabric? Yeah, it can be any kind of fabric. Like I said, I don't think like a leather or a pleather or something like that will work. It should be like a, like a knit fabric, um, but really any fabric will work for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some of this here. So this one's not stiffened. This one wasn't pre-stiffened, these little flowers. So we can kind of kind of get an idea of uh, why we want to stiffen them or add Mod Podge to the back of them in advance. I lost my scissors. Okay, there. That's the problem with tiny scissors. Um, okay, so this one, we did add Mod Podge to the back. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to cut out these tiny little flowers. I'm just gonna cut a size, a little area that's a little bit more manageable. You can see this is so tiny and so detailed. If this wasn't stiffened, there's a really good chance this little flower would be fraying and falling apart and wouldn't really look like a flower anymore by the time we were done with it. You can see how, how easy it is to cut to, how it just kind of like glides through because that fabric is nice and durable now that we've added the Mod Podge. And then this one has not been stiffened. So hopefully we'll have some good luck with it because I do want to use these flowers, but if not, it'll be a good learning moment for everyone. So I'm gonna do this larger flower here. You'll see how it will fray a little bit, definitely more than it did when, with the Mod Podge on it. And also you can see why I have these tiny scissors so we can cut tiny little details like this today. You can see it's starting to fray a little bit. It's actually not too bad. We're having some good luck here, but um, it's starting to fray ever so slightly. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna use these two. You can you could layer it as many times as you want to, but I'm gonna start with just these two to show you the technique. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this flower and I'm gonna adhere the whole thing onto my backpack. So I'm gonna um, brush the entire back of it with fabric Mod Podge. Oops. And again, you don't need a ton, that was too much. Um, so I'm just gonna scrape off some of that excess. Just enough to have a nice, thin, even coat on the back. Okay, so I'm 
So I'm gonna apply that to my backpack, make sure it's nice and pressed down. You can see it's spraying a little bit, but not bad. Once, if it does have frays like that, once you get it onto your backpack, it should be good. You can kind of trim the frays later on. So if you do have end up with that problem, don't worry about it. Okay, so now I have this tiny little flower and I do want him to be a little bit three-dimensional. So I'll show you how I'll do that. I'm not gonna apply Mod Patch fabric to the entire back since it's so tiny. If, if it wasn't so tiny, you could use your brush, but I'm gonna use the end of my brush and I'm gonna apply a little bit of Mod Podge. Can you guys see that? Right to the center of my flower. So the center only, and I'm gonna press him down. And you wanna make sure that's nice and dry. Cause then when you come back tomorrow, again, you can do many layers. Once it's dry in the middle, it'll be nice and durable and you can kind of pull or fold those edges up and you get a three dimensional flower because the edges are not, can you, can you see that Steven? Yeah, you can see that. Okay, good. The edges are not glued down, only the center is glued down. So you can create really cute little 3D elements like this too. Isn't that so cute? It's awesome. So super duper simple. Um, okay. Here's a question for you, Jesse. Um, Okay. If after you've applied your uh, fabric Mod Podge uh, to fabric, could you, would it be stiff enough to like punch out a shape with it, like with a craft punch or something? Oh yeah, I definitely would. Um, so you can do, if you have like a nice thin fabric, you know, I wouldn't do anything thick, but if you guys have like an elect electronic cutting machine at home, which I know most of you do, um, you can definitely, once you've stiffened it, cut out fabric on your electronic cutting machine, like your Cricut or Silhouette or whatever you have. Uh, and it won't fray. So you can put this on your mat and cut out whatever design you want. Um, and you can have your letters that way, which is way simpler than having to, you know, piece them out yourself. So yeah, great idea. You can definitely do that. And if you were to, you know, if, again, if you're fabric crafters, you probably know this, but you could do it with just your plain fabric, but it will fray. It's just hard to do um, with tiny little pieces like that. They just always want to fray. So this is a great little trick to um, sort of stiffen or apply some Mod Podge to the back of your fabric in advance and then cut it this way and you get a nice clean cut every time. So that's a great, great question. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna show you how we did this really cute, sorry, I keep switching back and forth on you. This really cute little faux stitch technique. So I'm gonna do a couple of little fabric patches on this bag here to finish it up. So I'll use this one that I've got here. I'm just gonna cut out a little patch, a little square. Cut out a couple of them. So that one would be cute. And maybe I'll do this cute little butterfly fabric. You can see why having all those little quilt uh, scraps are great for projects like this, lots of options. And I'm gonna uh, Mod Podge these down, just the, I'm gonna uh, apply Mod Podge to the full back of this and I'm gonna apply it onto my bag. So I've got one patch and I'm gonna overlap them a little bit because I think that would be really cute. So again, you wanna make sure it's really adhered on there. It's really flush, your two fabrics are are really touching everywhere. You don't want any of it lifting up. I'm gonna do this one on top of it. Little patch there. It's nice and flush. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of move aside uh, my Mod Podge area here. It's probably time for a new piece of wax paper anyway. So I'm gonna fold them up. Um, I'm gonna close my Mod Podge. Of course, you can keep adding tons and tons of fabric with our original design, uh, but I'm gonna grab some paint for now to show you how you can do that really fun little stitching technique. So I'm gonna grab some, this is just a uh, folk art multi-surface licorice. So like I said, whenever I'm painting on fabric, I always like to use multi-surface because it's made for just like the title, multiple surfaces. So it's really durable. I'm gonna put some of that in my, I just got a little paper plate here. There's a little paper plate here and I'm gonna grab a little tiny brush. So this is just a little liner brush or a little round brush, anything is fine. And I'm gonna dip in a little bit of water and pick up some of that black paint. 
And now I'm just gonna paint with a very fine tip on my brush. I'm gonna paint little uh, stitched marks all the way around to kind of look like this was a little stitched on patch, which is really fun. A really cute look without having to do all this hand stitching. Jesse, is there any need to Mod Podge the top of the fabric to seal it in? Uh, no, there's not. So people always ask that. I think a lot of people do like to kind of seal it just for like super duper extra durability. Um, but I, if you add um, Mod Podge fabric to the top, it gives it kind of like a satin sheen. Um, and I just really like the matte fabric, you know, look like the super matte um, uh, sheen on the fabric. So I don't, and I've never had a problem with it being any less durable. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Sure. So you can see I'm doing a really cute little, you probably can't see, a little stitched outline around there to look like my little piece was stitched on there. Just more and more details. I feel like the more details you add, the cuter it is. So you can see I'm dipping my brush in a little bit of water just because it's so thin. So I can get those, just thin it down ever so slightly because the folk art multi surface is super thick and creamy. So we're just, slightly, slightly thinning it down so it flows to do these little tiny tick marks. You can even add some to my little yellow guy here to give make him a little more interesting since he's kind of plain compared to the rest of these bold patterns. And like I said, I don't know if you guys are sewers out there or if you wish you were sewers and don't have the patience like me, uh, but this is a great, great product for all of your no sew projects. We've even done like little um, like decorative pillows and Mod Podge, uh, Mod Podge the edges shut instead of sewing them. Uh, again, just for decoration and things like that. But there's lots and lots of different things you can do with Mod Podge fabric. Um, lots and lots of different kinds of no sew projects. Okay, any more questions, Stephen? No, not right now. I think we're good. Awesome. All right, guys, so like I said, you definitely wanna let this cure according to the instructions on your Mod Podge fabric bottle. And then it is going to be um, uh, ready to throw in your washing machine. So like I said, we're all getting ready for back to school. Um, so this is a great project, a great way to customize your child's backpack. So make sure they can't lose it. <laughs> Nobody can forget that it's theirs. Um, but when it come, comes home dirty, you can just toss it in the washing machine with the rest of the laundry. So that is one of my favorite, favorite things about um, Mod Podge fabric. So please guys, if you decide to make this project, or if you're inspired by this technique, um, go ahead and hashtag plaid crafts if you decide to post it online. We would love, love, love to see what you're doing. Uh, we'll be back next week with more fun crafting projects during the week. Um, and don't forget, every Monday night we are here um, in the Michaels Mini Classroom doing Paint Night Live. So every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, um, we are here teaching you really fun paintings. This is actually the one that they did this week. So kind of a three-dimensional floral painting. So make sure to check that out, like I said, every Monday night. Um, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.